David and I thought it was going to be our speaker tonight. If you got one of the newsletters, it told that he was going to be here talking about tombstone preservation and fine graves. So if you came in here, um, David mailed tonight, and I'm sorry. I do have a couple slides at the end that would cover that topic, and that's why you came, so we can briefly talk about that. The first census in the United States was in 1790. The United States takes a census every 10 years. And in 1850 was the first time that everyone in the household, all three persons, were named, not just the head of the household. And most of the 1890 census was lost by fire in 1921. And since 1952, there has been a 72-year rule, which means that they will not release a census until it's 72 years old. And when they came up with that, the life expense expectancy was 72 years. Um, there are a lot of different videos that you can find on YouTube and different things online telling you about the census. And I wish I had more time to um, watch more of them. David texted me Sunday afternoon and told me that he had COVID. So that's when I started putting this slide show together. So just bear with me tonight. <laughs> so this uh, particular one, uh, this program is telling us that Ancestry actually read the 1950 census by using technology. So what's out there now is what this computer technology came up with. So they're wanting volunteers to go through it and read it and see if things need to be corrected, uh, transcribed differently and things like that. So this particular program is going to be online on Sunday if you're interested in watching that. Next slide. This slide is telling us why it's in the 1950 census. Address, the head of household, and all the people in the household and their relationship to the head of household. Race, gender, the age at their last birthday, marital status, state or country where they were born. Details about where they were, what they did, and what kind of industry they worked for. And then there are question, other questions, supplemental questions, that uh, not everyone had to answer. but. It asked if they lived in the same house the year before, um, the highest grade level of their education, how many hours they had worked the week before, and whether they were in the armed services. Next slide. So the 1950 census was released digitally April the 1st at midnight Eastern time. I was ready. I have been prepared for that mentally prepared for that. <laughs> I was looking forward to it. Now, I'm not in the 1950 census because I was born September 1950, so I just missed it. But I was excited to get to see my parents and my sister in the census together. So at 11 o'clock p.m. on March the 31st, I was ready. But I was thinking, what am I really supposed to do? I had just been thinking, I'm going to be online, but it's not going to be on Ancestry yet, so what am I going to do? And then, my computer and my phone amaze me sometimes. Things just pop up. Uh, the next one. This lady, Amy Johnson Crow, is a genealogist, and she has a lot of videos on YouTube. She has a channel that you can subscribe to. I think it's about $10 a month. But I like to watch her videos, and so she just popped up on my computer for her launch party. I mean, how perfect. So I click on it and all these other people are clicking on it and we just sat there with her with her party hat on and her telling us what to do. And so she told us the website to go to and it was just really fun because we could put in comments and, and questions and you'll see in the bottom right corner there's some other videos that she had posted about the census. So if you'll go to YouTube and look up Genealogy with Amy Johnson Crow, you can learn a lot more about the 1950 census than you're probably going to learn from me tonight. Okay, the next slide. So uh, she told us that the website was 1950census.archives.gov. So that's where we all went to start looking up this information. They have the population schedules and district maps and things like that. 
And then some of the bullet points of things that she told us, you'll see on some of the census records that it says, no one home. So if they went to the house and no one was there, they just put on there, just to kind of keep everybody on the street in order, they would just put no one home. And then they were supposed to put a reference on what she can find that family because then the census taker had to go back to their home, find them, and fill them in on another sheet. If, they were, if somebody was in the military stationed overseas in a foreign country, they're not in the 1950 census. And there, were agri there was an agriculture questionnaire. Those schedules were temporary records and no longer exist. There were also cards for infant cards for babies born January, February, and March in 1950. Those were also temporary records and no longer exist. And Amy said, if you find a poor image, if you happen to be the unlucky person that your, your record is on a bad image, just keep looking through the pages because all those pages were scanned and if they had some bad ones, they re-scanned them and then they destroyed the original census. Why not? Okay, next slide. So, when you go to the National Archives, this, this is gonna be the first thing you see. You have the options to either begin your search or resources. So if you look at resources on that next slide, it tells you about census forms, questions they asked on the 1950 census, enumeration districts, maps, and, and different kinds of finding aids, things that will help you in your search. The next slide. This is the, um, the district, this is Madison County. So I've put the, the blue rectangle around the Bemis area. So Bemis is 57, one, two, three, and four. You'll see kind of below Bemis, it's 5772, and so the whole area of Madison County is District 57. Okay. The next slide. This one is just zoomed in where you can see the Bemis area, area a little closer. Okay, the next one. Okay, this one is telling us. 571 is Bemis Unincorporated, that part of Civil District 1, bounded by m and Railroad, State Highway 18, Bemis Lane, and GM, uh, sell. what railroad track is that? Joel, I can't. GM and N. GM and N Railroad. So this is just telling us where each of those four different areas, what they cover. Next slide. So when you begin your search, you can put in the state. So where I have in the yellow highlight, I put in Tennessee, Madison. If I wanted to search for Haney, I can put any last name there. And then I wanted to search for Haney in District 57-1. You don't have to put a surname in there. You can just look for 57-1, and then you can just go from one page to the next, just looking at each of them. And this is 
one slide you're going to see after you click on the population schedule. This particular one is what they had to fill out to mail in to the Bureau of Census in Jackson. So this one tells me that Maddie Lee Thomason was the enumerator for this one. And it tells the population up in the corner, but it was so hard to read, I couldn't tell if it said 1,174, if it told me 400 and something. So each of those four areas, 57, 1, 2, 3, and 4, have one of these pages that tells kind of a breakdown of um, who the payroll count and who checked it to verify and things like that. Okay, then the next slide. I just picked a few pages out of each of the different areas. So this particular one in section 57.1, the name of the streets are on this side going, you have to turn your head sideways to be able to read them. But the streets mentioned on this one, Chester Street, which would really be Chester Levy Road. No. No? Holly. Oh, Holly. Okay. And it also said Henderson Road and Morton Street. That's Highway 45. Highway 45 is what they call Henderson Road. Okay. Uh, one family I noted on this page was the Haggard family, Don and his wife Willie, and their and Don's stepson, W.S. Holland, who was age 14. They'd be the highway. They, they were on the highway. And then at the bottom of these pages is where they picked certain people on the top part of the list, where you'll see a number. If, if the person that just happened to end up on that line, then they had information about them down at the bottom, Ex extra information that I mentioned more about. Okay, the next slide. <coughs> I just enlarged the top part of one of the pages. This one is Morton Street, Chester Street, and Main Street, which was actually, I think, Bemis Lane. Hopefully, you, maybe you can see that one a little bit better. Some have good handwriting and some have terrible. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the next line, and what they call Chester Street, which I thought was Chester Levy Road, but not, maybe not. This is where uh, the Wright brothers live. Um, <laughs> their dad was a car inspector with the railroad, and their mother, Mary Sue, was pregnant with their fourth son. And the way I know that is because their son, Roy, was born two days before me. <laughs> and so Neil was age 10, Larry Thomas Wright was five, and Danny Joe Wright was three. Okay, the next slide. Bemis Lane, and I think it said, it said W Highway 45. And on this street, once that I recognized, that I thought y'all would all know too, was Paul Rogers, his wife Georgia, their daughter Gloria Jean, and their son, their one-year-old son, Paul Dan Rogers. They lived in a service station. They lived in a service station. Okay. And Harold West, the druggist, and his wife Yvonne, and their daughter Caroline, age 11, and their daughter age six. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> when you have time to just sit and look at each page and go, oh, I know that person. <laughs> now, when I searched for the name Jackson, trying to find Joel, it was just taking me to Jackson, Tennessee. So if you have an unusual name, it works in your favor because you can try and find it easier. Okay, the next slide. My grandparents, I always knew that they lived on North Street, but the census says it was, it was North Ridge Road. Did you ever hear that before? My grandfather's name was really Elvin Ernest Haney Sr., but they, he went by Ernest, so that's what they have as his main name, but his name was really right the opposite. It was Elvin Ernest. My grandmother, Bessie, and then my uncle that everybody knew as Fat Haney, was Delvin Ernest Haney Jr. So he was listed as clerking in a retail grocery store. So everybody knew Fat Haney had a grocery store on D Street. My uncle Kelly was Charles Kelly, and it, if I read it right, it said he was a bean hauler for the cotton mill. 
Is there such a thing as a bean hauler or a beam hauler? B E A something. I don't know. Probably C. Well, that's what I wondered, but it definitely looked like the letter B. It looked like B E A, so I wasn't sure about that. And then the youngest one in the family, of course, the, the three, their three daughters were grown and married and, and out of the house, and my, my dad was out of the house too. Married, but my uncle Billy Joe was a senior at Jabby Young High School, so it didn't say anything about what he was doing. But I know he was a senior because he graduated in 1950. And my uncle Kelly happened to be one that is listed at the bottom, and it was asking the special information on him. And he said that he worked 52 hours, 52 weeks. Thank y'all. <laughs> 52 weeks in 2021. So he worked all year. section 
57 and forward. And the next one, 5772, is Highway 18 to Caldwell Road. Some of the heads of household are Carl Young Sr., Carl Young Jr., George Morris, Joe Gobelay, Coy Garrett, and Paul Watlington. And in the Gobelay family, James Gobelay was the first baby born in 1950. And I, I graduated from Southside with Jimmy in 1968. Okay, the next slide. This is 5773, and the Streets that are written in on this side are Old Oliver Road, which is now known as Riverside Drive, Steamboat Ferry Road, and Old Denmark Road. Homer Laster was the manager of a dairy, and you know he owned the Wells and Laster Dairy. His wife, Sadie, known for being Sadie Lou, like the Sadie Lou service station and grocery store, and their daughter, Diane, who was eight, and their son, Homer B. Laster III, known as Mikey, was four. Floyd Matthews was the manager of the grocery store. Mary D. Matthews was a school teacher in the science department. And N.T. Matthews Jr., it says he was a wood craftsman at the cabinet shop. And his wife, Winifred, and their daughter, Brenda, was six, and Jane was three. And you know, later he owned um, Thunderbird Motel, and he owned the Matthews cabinet shop. Okay, the next slide. When you find a page that you're wanting to save, see where I have the red rectangle around the three little dots? If you click on the three dots, you can download that document and save it to your computer. And those, um, those rectangles across the bottom are actually different pages in that area. So you can click on each page and look at it to see if you know anybody in that section. So like I, I said earlier, there are different people who have good videos out there that you can watch on YouTube to, to learn more about this. This is Nika Smith. She is a member of the Jackson Madison Chapter Daughters of the American Revolution, and she does a wonderful job with ancestry, and she makes videos for them, and she has such a wonderful personality. So she, she has this particular a video about the 1950 census. She may have others out there I just didn't have a chance to look yet. But you can look her up and, and watch her video. Okay, the next one. So one thing that she's telling about is how you can find the map. So when you go to the home page of Ancestry, which you do have to pay to be on Ancestry, but you can access that if you go to the library in the Tennessee room. But I typed in Bemis, Madison County, Tennessee, and it took me to the map, and then you can zoom in on it. If you keep zooming in, you can see more and more information. So I just kind of highlight the famous area on that one. Okay, the next one. This lady is Constance Henley Knox, also known as Connie Knox. And she has some real good videos about genealogy on YouTube. And one day I thought, wouldn't it be nice to be related to somebody like that who knows so much about genealogy and would probably include your family in their genealogy. So while I was really wishing that she was my cousin, I found her as a match to my husband. <laughs> she matched my husband, y'all. <laughs> that was close. She and my husband also matched with Diane Lasseter. So Connie Knox and Diane Lasseter are fourth cousins to my husband, Butch Williams through the Winslow family from Henderson County. And I emailed her and she was very nice and she did send some Winslow information, but it applied to Diane's side of the Winslow family and not my husband's side of the Winslow family. But do take the time to look her up. She also has one of those um, accounts, I guess you'd call it, on uh, YouTube where you pay to watch I guess the extra things she has, but she has plenty of videos out there that anybody can watch and or you can find. And if there are some of these that you want to see me later <coughs> and uh, write them down or if you want me to email them to you, I'll be glad to do that. Okay, so the next slide. 
that was all I had about the census. So this is something that David had about funding to himself. This is an article that he had in the family fund that was quarterly for the Genealogy Society. There are different products out there that you can buy and to try to clean the, the tombstones and they, they all work. But this orifice is the one thing that David likes to use. He'll clean it first with, with this product. And then the other one, the D2, I think is a more expensive product, and I think he uses it later. So just don't use harsh brushes. Use soft brushes to clean the skin, <coughs> and uh, just, you don't want to scrub them too hard with bristles and, and mess them up. <coughs> if you want more details on this, I'll be glad to email it to you or, or show it to you up close after the meeting. <coughs> My husband and I use Wet and Forget, and you can get it at um, Lowe's or there are different places where you can find it. But you can get the concentrated or you can get it in the container that's ready to spray. Uh, this was my maintenance grandparents' marker at Hollywood Cemetery. You can see how it had gotten really in bad shape. But it's 75 years old and it, it just looked really bad. So Butch sprayed it just a couple different times. And I think he just brushed it a little bit with a soft brush. And so they just get whiter over time. You just, you really just wet them down and forget about them. You go back and look at them later and they look better than they did before. <coughs> okay, the next slide. Since David was also going to talk about Find a Grave, I'm just going to put a plug in there for Find a Grave too. It is a really good site to research. If you get lucky and you get on there and, and look for a great grandparent, um, volunteers put all the information in there. So if you're lucky, somebody's put your great grandparent in there and link them to their parents and their parents. Sometimes you can go all the way back and actually find an American Revolutionary War soldier, if you get lucky. But there is what we call a virtual cemetery for the famous cemetery. Uh, Wanda Walker Lee and I worked on that in 2011. We just took the whole famous list and we divided it up and we made sure that everybody had a memorial. Some people already had memorials, but not all of them. So we made memorials for each person and then you can put them in a virtual cemetery. Um, I have one for Southside alumni for the first 23 classes of Southside. And you can make one for your family. You can have one just for your family or your class or be with historical society or you know, whatever you want to do with that. Okay, and then there's one last slide. Just to let you see what one particular memorial could look like. This is one for my daddy. And you can put different pictures on there. You can put their obituary on there if you want to, and any information that you want to put. And there are places where you can go in on their birthday or something, and you can add what they call a flower. Just say, like, I'm thinking of you today or something. So, that's all I have. Do you have questions? Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? <coughs> Comment, question. Okay. Back to that slide that uh, you had of your dad uh -huh. uh, at, at the mill. What was it that it said his occupation was? A cradle. A cradle. A cradle. A cradle. A cradle. A cradle. Was a Creeler, but it said W A R K. Is that Bork Creeler? Yeah. Okay. Now, who was the one that was? Was it a beam hauler? Uh, my uncle. Okay. Was a beam hauler or beam hauler? I believe it was beam hauler. Beam I worked hauler. in a textile mill for okay. a while, and the loom that I worked on it had a barrel-sized piece that was full of thread. And they called that the beam, and there was a guy that had to load that thing, and he was a tough guy, and he pushed it around on a two-wheeler, and that's about all I remember of it. I didn't have to deal with it very often. But one of the things I did, 
that as I was a creator and I had to lug those little spools on the earth to the moon. My fingers still remember that. <laughs> Uncle Kelly, I'm sure, was a hard worker. Yeah. He was. He didn't mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> he was a tough guy. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> right, well, I want to thank y'all for coming out tonight. If you didn't get a newsletter in the mail, we have some extra copies. And uh, Venus Heritage Day, I hope everybody knows what we're doing for Venus Heritage Day. It starts at doors open at 10 a.m. And at 1010, there will be a grand opening of the new playground equipment at the Stella Duncan Park. And the Amerigroup, the company that gave the money for the equipment and the parks department, that will be there for the grand opening. And they'll be here at 1030. Um, we're going to have a couple of people portraying people from like the 1930s. You remember Greg Hammond did our program about Condo Street a year or two ago. So it's his father that's going to portray his grandfather. The, the older Greg Hammond, we have, we have an older and younger Greg Hammond, so the older Greg Hammond is going to portray his grandfather, Ransom Hammond, who worked in the cotton mill. And then some of you were here for Judy Rhodes Doris when she portrayed that lady from the Venice Book Club. So she's going to be back again. And she was so much fun the last time. So I'm looking forward to that. Bobby McAlexander will be here with the chat with you again. And he's working on a new one. Uh, hopefully it's going to be ready in time. But it's going to be where you can see inside the building and he's going to have it lit up inside. So hopefully that will be ready. Um, Bring some cups for sale. He might, yeah, if we don't run, or he, he can take orders. He does. Um, Chatty cheap cups, I know. Chatty cheap cups. Yeah. Yeah, almost. He, he's made them. He's, he's made cups, the big heavy mugs with south side on them before. He's done famous. He's done the Chatty cheap. Um, he's made different things, and, and so. Comes and stays all day, and so that's wonderful. We're going to have barbecue plates and drinks for ten dollars, and we're going to have ice cream. Oh, nice. <laughs> Tell them about the ice cream, Joel. It's homemade ice cream, uh, an old-fashioned formula, but it has a uh, John Deere motor pulling it. One of those kind of hit and miss type motors you can hear. Chug, chug, boop, chug, chug, <laughs> like that. And it, it's sitting on a wagon. He keeps us on a wagon. It's easy to get around that way. But then he's not charging anything, but we're going to sell it for $4 a cup. He said that's about right. And uh, he's donating all of his time and ingredients to the society, and his mother works at r &J. She put me on it. <coughs> huh? Three dollars a cup. Was it three? Three dollars a cup. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. And... Well, you can pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and the fire department is going to be here with the big flag that they put up on display. And it's also our Forces Day, so we'll be recognizing our veterans. And... Oh yeah, the famous Boogie Blues band, band will be here again. This is the group that was here last year, so um, that'd be good. These people are donating their time to do that for us. And at one o'clock, Joel's going to do the program about the museum since it's the 100 year anniversary of the museum. So if you haven't seen that before, then you've seen it come back again because he shows pictures taken off the map that. And we can show the tunnel video too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.